Good day everyone, Sami Hada here, and today I'll be ranking the Akatsuki members from weakest to strongest. I'll only refer to the canon material from the anime and manga of the Naruto series. Also, I'll just rank the original 10 members from the series. The Akatsuki are all really strong shinobis, who can take down most ninjas. That being said, some are clearly weaker than others. There is a lot of discussion surrounding this topic, so I figured why not give my two cents on this topic. So let me know what you all think about my list, but before we begin, a forewarning reminder that this is just my opinion and how I see them ranked from what I've seen in the show. So with that being said, coming in at number 10 is Zetsu. I believe this is pretty obvious, he just isn't a fighter, he's a spy. For those who will bring up him taking over the body of Abito and pierced Madara, okay, but that doesn't really mean anything because he took over the body of a really strong ninja who was too tired to resist. That's really the only thing he has going for him as far as fighting goes. Every time Zetsu did get into a battle with his own body, he would pretty much always lose. Again, he was just a spy for the organization, an extremely great one at that, but not a fighter at all. As for number 9, I picked Conan. Now, hold on, hear me out here. I feel she gets way too much credit in battle. Let me explain. We see her duel with Jiraiya when she was waiting for Pain to come and battle Jiraiya, and she doesn't look good doing so, and gets trapped. Now, I can imagine she wasn't really trying to finish him, but you know, still. The battle with Obito is where I believe she gets way too much credit for. Yes, she had him use Izanagi or else he would have lost, but Obito wasn't taking her seriously the whole time. She knew things we didn't know about him. She studied him for so long, prepared her whole village with traps, tons of paper, fought him on home territory, and just took his arm away. Yeah, and as soon as Obito took her seriously, he defeated her with ease. Come on guys, she's way too overhyped. Coming in at number 8 is Hiden. I know, I know, people think he's trash, but hear me out on this one, okay? Hiden and Kakuzu goes to take the two-tailed beast. The holder is a jonin who mastered her biju. Hiden defeats her, does a ritual right after this, then right after that, they go hunting down for a bounty. Hiden defeats all the people in that place and does another ritual. Then they carry the bounty, changing who carries the body back and forth. They get the body to the place needed to collect the bounty. Hiden then goes outside to wait, not expecting a thing, and Asuma and other Jonin and Shikamaru comes in with a fast plan to take him out. He's trapped in Shikamaru's shadows most of the fight and still manages to defeat Asuma with only getting helped once, when they chopped his head off and Kakuzu had to bring his head to Hiden. They then managed to flee when reinforcements came, rested a few days and during those three days they were sealing the second and third tailed beast. Eventually the Leaf Village found out where Hiden and Kakuzu were hiding. They were also planning a ton to take both of them down, mind you. Hiden would then be able to hold his own when fighting Kakashi, and then Shikamaru caught him in his shadows, taking him away to a forest that is set up with booby traps. Shikamaru is in a forest, which is really good for his shadows, especially for a close combat person like Hiden. By the way, Shikamaru is one of the smartest people in the Naruto world, and is pretty strong. Stylistically, Shikamaru is a perfect person to defeat Hiden. And even then, Hiden would have beaten him, but he's just not that smart in battle and is far too careless and reckless. Plus, Shikamaru is a genius and had a ton planned and would have lost if Hiden double checked if he was really 100% defeated. I believe Hiden could be way higher on this list if he was not so reckless, careless, and smarter and took things more seriously in battle, but he doesn't. As for number 7, I chose Sasori. He is really strong, easily taking out Kankuro, the strongest Kazakage, and taking down a small nation. But the reason he's ranked this low is because he lost to Chio and Sakura. Granted, Chio did know so much about him and whatnot, but still. 
And yes, I do know Sasori wasn't going all out and could have taken them out with ease if he really wanted to, but didn't. Fighting is a lot more than just being powerful. A lot of a battle has to do with the mental side. People say that Sasori didn't want to defeat Chio just because that was his grandmother, but okay, that's a part of being great in battle is getting over the mental hurdle and he didn't. Plus, Taking out a small nation of weak people isn't that impressive, and defeating the strongest Kazakage isn't either, because we don't know how strong he even was, and the Sand Village isn't really known for having really powerful ninjas. Other members of the Akatsuki have taken out Kazakages as well, so yeah. I don't want to make it sound like I'm hating on Sasori or any of the Akatsuki members. I really like Sasori and all the other members. I just really need to be honest with how I see them fitting in. Coming in at number 6, I picked Deidara. Let me elaborate on why I put Deidara above Sasori. He managed to defeat Gara, and yeah, I know Gara crushed his hand, but keep in mind that he was focused on dodging the village's attacks as well as Gara's attacks. Obviously, he didn't want to get attacked out of the blue by some of the sand members. Deidara also took down the third tail beast. He also was able to hold his own with Kakashi and the 8-man squad until juiced up Naruto came in swinging and then had to flee with just missing an arm because of Kamui. He would then later battle Sasuke soon after. It's a Sasuke with curse mark and a fully developed Sharingan. He is very skilled and really smart. Plus he was a really bad matchup for Deidara because of a lot of obvious reasons and of course the lightning element. Even then, Daidara managed to almost defeat Sasuke, but for some reason he decided to end it all using his last bit of chakra to take Sasuke with him. I would imagine he decided to go out like this due to his hatred towards the Uchihas, even though he probably could have gotten away or even defeat Sasuke. But Sasuke used plot armor no jutsu and was able to use his last remaining chakra to get away from the blast. And yes, I'm still a bit salty, that's how Daidara went out. In at number 5 is Kakuzu. For some reason people think he is really weak, maybe because he was partnered with Hiden, but who knows. Point is, he's really strong. Kakuzu was able to battle with Kakashi in a great 1v1 while having Team 10 helping Kakashi, and even did great when Team 7 came to save them. He fought really well considering he was fighting really strong and smart people, and was outnumbered. Also, let's not forget that if Kakuzu would have helped Hiden fight Shikamaru and Asuma, they would have been defeated with ease, which would mean Hiden would have been alive to help Kakuzu defeat Team 7, Team 10, and Kakashi. He also was reanimated using Edo Tensei, and did well considering everyone else has gotten much stronger since he last seen them. Plus, he wasn't at full power. Trust me, Kakuzu is very strong and rightfully deserves to be at number 5. For number 4, I chose Kisami Hoshigaki, the former 7 swordsman of the Mist, now a Katsuki member. We've seen him take on multiple Jonin Shinobi in part 1. He was able to take on Mike Guy and force him to use 6th Gate to defeat his clone that was at 30%. Kisami was also able to take down the 4th Jinjuriki on his own. He also was really close to defeat and capture Killer B even when he was outnumbered. That was until Samehada was able to protect and help B and shortly after Killer B's brother A, the Raikage, came in to save him. His last battle was when he escaped a ton of really strong ninjas but Mike Guy was able to catch up with him with some help and went 7th gate used Daytime Tiger, and was able to capture Kasami. For those who don't know, 7th Gate is extremely crazy strong. Just look at what 8th Gate did to Madara. He did good against Mike Guy considering he was stuck in Samehara's healing and was caught off guard when Naruto was able to sense him. He would later, you know, end his own existence. As for number 3, I picked Itachi Uchiha. He's shown us a lot of times in the show that he's extremely talented and deserves to be number 3. I think that's pretty obvious if you watch the whole series. One fight I really want to talk about though is the Sasuke one. 
People gave him sometimes a really hard time because of that fight. Itachi wasn't even trying with Sasuke, he was toying with him and could have easily defeated Sasuke at any time but he didn't want to. Just to prove that statement, Itachi not only could have defeated his brother at any moment but during the battle with Sasuke, he was able to destroy Orochimaru while on the brink of his limits and even then he still could have finished off Sasuke. Oh and he stopped Kabuto so yeah he's very powerful. He would be listed higher but doesn't have a better resume than the next two members. And for the top two, I had a really hard time choosing but number two on my list is Abito Uchiha or Toby. I feel that the last two are pretty self-explanatory. We all know Obito is really strong and what he's done, but I want to talk about why he isn't number one. He doesn't have the better or cleaner resume than number one from the Naruto, Kakashi, Konan, Minato battles, etc. But nonetheless, he is very powerful and skilled and deserves to be number two. I don't really like to mention the Ten Tails stuff just because it's ridiculous. And last but not least, coming in at number one is Nagato or Pain. I put him at number one just because he is the best, strongest, and smartest in battle out of them all. He took out Jiraiya, destroyed the Leaf Village literally and figuratively, but he was getting weaker ever since the Jiraiya fight, which led to him not making it in the end. But when he was at Otenseid, he was able to take on Itachi, Naruto, and Killer B. Nagato, in my opinion, deserves to be number one because the level of competition he has and won. Not only that, but the way he did win just showed how skilled he was. No one has the kind of resume he has, nor has done it as clean and crisp as Nagato. Now, to me, there are three clear levels in the Akatsuki's hierarchy of power. I see them split into three brackets with each tier being a different level. Tier 3 being Hiden, Konan, Zetsu. Tier 2 being Kisami, Kakuzu, Daidara, Sasori. And Tier 1 being Nagato, Abito, and Itachi in that order. So that's my list of each Ikatsuki member in order from weakest to strongest. Let me know what you all think about my list. Was I right, kinda wrong, or just utterly wrong? I love to hear your thoughts surrounding this subject. Well, that's it for me today. I hope you all really enjoyed this video. Until next time.